Oh, hey guys. Welcome to my series on the artistic principles of visual effects. I'm going to take you on a magical journey through the five principles, and we're going to start with gameplay, which is really, I think, the most important foundational one, because honestly, as a visual effects artist, I think of myself first as a game developer, and secondly as an artist. And what I mean by that is, the effects that I create don't live in isolation, right? They are deeply connected to what the player is experiencing in the gameplay, in the moment to moment. And honestly, I would consider myself a failure even if I was able to create quadruple A quality graphics, whatever the heck that looks like, and the game wasn't fun or satisfying or didn't meet the goals, whatever those were, right? Um, because the visual effects in a game really drive a lot of the gameplay. They're so central to what the player is experiencing moment to moment that it's even tied to things like how powerful the player is or how mystical the environment is or all those kinds of things. And so I really want to emphasize gameplay first because it ties into all the other uh, concepts that we'll get to later on. So, so one way to think of gameplay is that gameplay is king, right? A lot of studios follow this mentality and I think it's a fantastic uh, philosophy to have. Um, the example on the left is uber clear, right? Like this is a test level where it's obvious what's going on. It's clear where the walls are and where the bullets are going to ricochet off from. And if an enemy were to pop out, you would instantly be able to recognize them. That's maximum visual clarity, right? Well, it doesn't always have to be that literal when you're trying to say gameplay is king. Studios like Blizzard, they walk an excellent uh, line of balance where games like Hearthstone, shown here on the right, it's very obvious what's happening when you play the card, but it's themed up wonderfully with the effects that play on those cards. And the effects really drive home what's happening and communicates it very clearly. Another approach of thinking of uh, gameplay as it, relates to, um, as it relates to art, specifically effects, is the experience, right? In, in League of Legends, you know, when, the, when a player sits down to play the game, those of you who have played it, you know that it's an experience, right? There's, there's excitement, there's despair, there's frustration, there's joy, and all these things mixed together to make an experience, right? Well, the visuals help with that just as much as the gameplay mechanics themselves. And then there's even things beyond the visuals and the mechanics. There's the meta progression that happens outside of the game. There's the uh, audio design, which is so often underrated as a part, core part of the experience. Well, really all these different kinds of things can be bucketed into game design and aesthetics, right? You've got um, the moment-to-moment -moment feel of the game, you've got the mechanics of the game, you've got all the different systems that you have to track, whether that's items or characters or environments or whatever the game may have. And then you've got over on the aesthetic side things like um, like I mentioned earlier, you've got audio design, you've got the tone of the game, you've got the theme of the game, you've got the art style, which includes character animation, character design, and of course visual effects. So all of these are working together to serve the experience, right? And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we as players, we sit down on the couch or at our computer and we want to have an experience and hopefully the visual effects that you're making as a visual effects artist serve the experience and don't fight against that experience. Now, what is that experience exactly? Well, it depends on the game. And because it depends on the game, the effects that you make are going to vary from game to game, right? Some games it matters a lot that the experience is the sort of tranquil exploration through an environment. Um, other games it's all about the excitement and the adrenaline that you get from exploding all kinds of things all around you. Or it could be about the strategy and the tactics and maneuvering in a very specific kind of way. So regardless of what the goals are of the game, your focus as an effects artist should always be to uh, work closely with your game designers and very much serve that experience or serve that gameplay, whatever uh, philosophy you end up going with. So different games do this differently. I'll just run through some examples real quick. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest is a fantastic example where you know the the effects are helping to meet the goal of ambient life. You know you've got things like um, 
ethereal dreamlike vibes going on and obviously the, the mysterious magic that uh, envelops that world and this is something that I found a useful exercise is whatever game you're working on try to narrow it down to just three goals just three simple pillars of your effects because effects can be so many different things you know like um, in a game like Battle Chasers uh, it's more about like the awesome impact of an effect and really selling that uh, moment with lots of ceremony of exploding an enemy with this awesome ability that you cast you know it's larger than life these goals are so different from Ori you know it, it's it's really variant based on the game that you work on what your effect should be simply saying that oh they should be stylized or oh they should be really believable and realistic I'd like to get a little more specific than that because I feel like games have so much nuance to them that you really want to be careful about uh, the choices that you're making. Be very deliberate, especially if you've got a team of multiple effects artists working on a game. It becomes very critical that all of you are aligned on specifically what you are making and what you're not making. You know, a game like Battlefield 1, again, very different. This is all about, you know, making the environment reactive to the effects, you know, the effects marry to the environment very seamlessly. It's hyper-realistic, of course, um, but it's got powerful and impactful um, energy to the effects, um, so that when you're firing off different weapons, it's just very um, exciting and, and uh, you know, emotional, the effects that you're creating in that world. Overwatch is another great example of clear effects goals, where you know, the effects are punchy, very satisfying when you uh, fire off abilities and weapons, but then also they have a nice personality to them to match the characters, right? The shapes are very distinctive um, in a way that, the, that makes them live in that same world as the characters, while also another goal is the competitive integrity. So these effects live in a world where, um, you know, you've got esports built around them and you want to be able to see as a player what's going on in that environment and so they get in and out of the environment quickly the effects don't linger around too long now moving on to League of Legends which is much more my experience uh, that I've actually uh, been through firsthand um, there's very specific goals that League has right for those of you who aren't familiar with League I'll just very quickly say it's a game with a lot of characters in it and all these characters coexist together in a game where you've got ten of them and they all have to brawl out in a top-down view and it is a competitive game where you know we've got all this action going on and um, we need to make sure that it's very clear this is a, an example of a team fight here with uh, good old I'm a cutie pie playing there on, on the Lucian and things become unclear very quickly in League of Legends because you've got these tons of characters ten of them at once potentially all firing off their biggest abilities all at once and you've got effects everywhere and so we have to get into a lot of considerations about gameplay which interestingly enough our wonderful principal VFX artist Jin Yang did such a great job on explaining in our style guide for our visual effects and I'm gonna link you guys to that style guide it's available online and you can check it out and Jin has been an awesome mentor of mine he's uh, He's, he's taught me everything I know about, you know, 3D effects development. And so I really thought it was worthwhile to kind of dive into his style guide and give a little bit of uh, my take on it, but then also give more examples to follow up on that. So for each of these videos, we're going to do that pattern where we talk a little bit about the style guide and then we talk a little bit about some hands-on examples to illustrate it. All right, so here we're learning a little bit about gameplay clarity as it relates to primary and secondary shapes. I'll use my mouse here to kind of show this off a little bit. So uh, I'm not going to read everything in the style guide, don't worry. Just really briefly, like you, you can see very clearly what the primary shape is because that's the edge of the AOE or the area of effect around the outer edge. Now as effects artists we like to dress things up and so you can add some nice flavor on the inside here but at the end of the day it, it serves the gameplay which is this spell doing damage in a very clear AOE around the outer edge. Now I've got more examples here and I've got notes I want to make sure I uh, go over all the proper stuff so if you see me glancing off that's what I'm doing. 
So we've got more examples of the primary and the secondary. Again, you know, I've got the head of the missile here, and then the nice little bits in the trail that are leading off behind it uh, from LeBlanc's missile here. And then we, continuing on, have a good and bad example. Now, uh, in League of Legends, we certainly over the years have been guilty of muddying up the gameplay space. Uh, we have aspirational goals. We by no means claim that we are perfect at reaching those goals. That's kind of the disclaimer for all of these videos that I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is all about aspiring to do better moving forward and taking all the things we've learned from the past to improve. So here we've got Timo's mushroom exploding in this nice noxious purpley green cloud of gas. And the area of effect here is the same as the area effect here on his on his skin. So on Omega Squad Teemo, we have a very clear boundary around the outer edge, and then we have the explosion happening here. And the way this animates is, you know, it plumes outward and it kind of like radiates out to this edge. Um, you can see that the gameplay, uh, the competitive integrity of the game is preserved in this effect. However, in here, when you're standing over here getting hit by this damage, it's very frustrating and very unclear. Another older example that we used to have in the game was Sona's Ultimate, where you know these uh, bars that radiated out when she went to stun you was maybe hitting you right here, like maybe this yellow part is supposed to hit you, but then it's like tapered here. I, I admit, when I first played the game, I thought that this tapered like this. Turns out it doesn't. Turns out the actual area of effect is just a simple rectangle. So showing with your visual effects what the actual gameplay space is that would stun you, very important in League of Legends. All right, so level of importance. This is an interesting one because, again, as an effects artist, there's this tendency to really crank things up, and I struggle with this constantly. The temptation is to say, I want to make it shiny so that people like it, so that they enjoy it every time they cast it. And on Elementalist Lux, this is a prime example where it's like, you know, she casts her basic attack where she just throws a little piece of light out pretty frequently, right? She uses it to kill these little minions, she uses it to uh, procure her passive so that, you know, she can do a little extra damage here and there. Basically, it's an effect that you see all the time. Her ultimate, however, has a long cooldown and uh, takes a while before it can charge up again and you can fire it again. That's where you want to spend the budget. I mean, the budget of brightness or the budget of, um, you know, impact, I guess you would say. And the reason for that is it does a ton of damage and it's a super high impactful moment for the player. So in order to best serve the gameplay goals, uh, we want to save all of that for the more periodic stuff. I'm sure you get the idea. So uh, to illustrate that further, Jin went so far as to even break this down into categories, right? We've got things like idle particles that are just kind of always on. They should be super subtle. Low opacity, not very standout-ish. Basic attack, we just went over that, you know, this missile flying out here. You want to keep it pretty subdued. You've got defensive spells, damaging spells, and then you've got game changers. And I love the thought of a game changer. Just to briefly elaborate on this, imagine you're playing a game. This could be any game. Now, something happens where if you don't react or change your behavior in some way, you're going to die. And that death comes with a penalty of some kind. Maybe you lose durability to your armor. Maybe you have to wait for X amount of seconds before you can respawn. Maybe you lose progress in a level, etc., etc. Whatever the penalty is, it's our job as an effects artist to properly warn that player. We need to give them information that's going to inform them enough so that they can make an informed decision about what their next move is going to be. And these are the game changers. These are the things that they modify the gamer's behavior or the player's behavior. So these deserve a little bit more real estate. These deserve a little bit more emphasis. Now, if you've already used up that real estate on these other kinds of effects that kind of happen all the time, or they're just like a little bit of defense or a little bit of damage, um, you're going to run into some trouble getting this across to the player that, hey, 
attention, this thing is happening, because it's happening, you probably want to change some aspect of your behavior. Maybe you want to put up a shield, maybe you want to move out of the way, maybe you don't want to attack the thing because if you do attack it during this thing, then you're in trouble, etc. Hopefully you get the idea, like, game changers need their space to breathe. They need, um, they need to stand out above the crowd, some way or another. And then of course ultimates, which are moments of high power, high excitement, um, I recommend getting these in and out of the gameplay space pretty quickly. Don't let them linger around. I mean, if you let it linger for too long, then uh, it's going to tell the player something confusing about, well, is it still going off? Is it still doing damage? I don't know. But if it gets in and out, then you, it's nice because uh, that's clear. Like, it's done doing whatever it was doing, and you can now move on with the game. So here's an example of Tristana doing her rocket jump. Now, uh, this is where we as VFX artists start off, right? We, we get going, um, we have this uh, nice little AOE, this area of effect that the designer gives us. Um, she dashes to a point and then she does damage in this ring. So you get started as an effects artist, adding a little flourish. You know, you can see here there's a little dust poof going off and a little blip. Now for League of Legends, this isn't quite cutting it because well, it's just not very cool. It doesn't have this nice excitement to it. It doesn't have a nice big explosion to it. Um, it's not really selling that she's like rocketing through the air. Um, however, if it were a game that, say, had 200 of these Tristanas all on the screen at the same time, this would probably be this would probably be an appropriate amount of noise and excitement, right? But because it's just one Tristana, and we want her to feel cool, we got to amp it up. So of course, effects artist tendency make it amazing, right? Big explosion, nice big trail of fire going through the air. It feels super epic. Well, now we've overdone it because it's overshot the AOE. It's no, no longer clear who's getting damaged and who's not getting damaged. And honestly, it doesn't even do that much damage, so it's way too big for that. So we end up with something that's a nice medium for League. And this isn't always the case. You don't always want your effects to be a nice middle spot. But for League, we have to walk that line, right? We have to make it satisfying for the player, but also we got to make it so it's clear for the player. And that's the, ch that's the challenge that we face. So this is a, a little bit of insight into kind of how we're thinking about gameplay on League of Legends when we're doing visual effects, at least. So if you want to learn more, uh, there's a video, and I'll link it, um, of Dragon Trainer Tristana. This is also on my channel. And I talk a little bit about balancing all these elements in a very hands-on sort of way of how it's constructed and how the effect comes together to create this uh, unified outcome for a simple basic attack. Also, if you're looking to learn more, highly recommend the Real-Time Visual Effects Forum. It's realtimevfx.com. Um, a friend of mine, Keith, he's an amazing guy. He set up this forum and uh, it runs wonderfully. It's full of uh, industry professionals who do visual effects and students who are trying to learn effects. And it's a great place to meet and get ideas and understanding, whether you're looking through other people's forums and just uh, other people's posts on the forum and just creeping on there, or if you want to share knowledge with us, we would love to have you uh, come and join us. And then also attached to that forum, I own and operate a job board where companies can come on and post their jobs and you as a, an effects artist can go and see what's current in the industry and. Um, maybe create a job profile on there and find some work and break into the industry. So I really hope that you guys uh, got something out of it. Um, you can look me up on that forum that I mentioned before on real-time VFX. I'm at Kaiserito and you can go to my website kaiserhouse.com. I've got lots of learning materials on there. Uh, if you haven't hit it up, I recommend it. I've got a Pinterest board full of reference. Uh, Twitter keeps, keeps you updated on some stuff. Haven't updated it in a while, but Maybe I'll get back on there soon. And of course, my YouTube channel, which apparently you were able to find. And hopefully this has been useful to you. Leave some comments. Let me know if you liked it. And uh, I'll get back to you with the other principles soon. Thanks. Bye.